Alright guys, it's Simon here, and welcome back to our Minecraft Design School. So today we're looking at Pit Rock's uh, world again. He's got a few things on his storage he wants me to look at, but mostly it's other things too. So first of all, let's see. He says, the storage, the entrance changed it again, any thoughts? He doesn't actually say what he thinks about it. Um, let me just take a, look, a little bit closer look at it. So we're talking about the main entrance. The last time we said the top it was recessed and the bottom one sticks out. It still does that, I think. I don't know why he, he kept that. I really do think, like even one block, it feels like it's a small thing sitting on a big thing. I mean, if you imagine, like when I look at it, it feels like it's someone with a big head and a small hat, if that makes sense. You know, it, it, it it's like the hat doesn't actually cover the whole head and so it looks a bit ridiculous although the yeah like the I don't know if you guys can see what I see like imagine if, if this is a face then you know the, the, the bottom part seems to be too fat and the top part seems to be too skinny like a like an egg head kind of I don't know I, I really do think that the top bit should overhang the bottom bit a little bit instead of the other way around because at the moment you can see the bottom bit is actually like like that thing there is one block further out to the side from the top bit, and then the bottom bit sticks out one block from the from the top bit. It it, it really does seem like you know it's the wrong way around. I really, I mean, if it were me, I really would make the top bit bigger and maybe not as dark as well. Maybe have like a, a lighter outline just to make it a little bit more prominent than the bottom bit. It, it still, f I mean, it feels a little odd to me. I don't know if, like, again, Pit Rock doesn't actually say what he thinks about it, whether he's happy or not. I would, yeah, I would make the bottom bit smaller and the top bit bigger. Because you know, when you draw a house, oh, zombies. I mean, when you draw a house, like you, you go, okay, so, you know, this is like. I mean, and, and then on top of it you have a roof. I mean, if you... You know, the, the roof is always bigger than the bottom bit. I should have that a bit taller as well. So I mean, the top bit is always smaller than the, than the bottom bit. If you kind of just draw, you know, draw a, a, a really basic uh, children's drawing of a house. Because the roof overhangs the walls, you know, the roof is wider than the walls usually. And that looks normal. I mean, that's what we expect. Whereas here, the roof doesn't overhang. It's the opposite, and so it looks a little bit weird that way. And the reason the roof overhangs, of course, is to keep the rain away from the walls, right? So that it doesn't leak or anything, so the water doesn't go into the windows and all that. And so, you know, all buildings in the real world, to keep the rain out, will have the roof overhang the walls. And so when you have it so that it doesn't overhang, it feels a little bit weird. You know, let's go inside, and he says... Uh, where are we going with this? Okay, let's put a ladder in. Why... Anyway... Do your cows escape? I know they would escape fences, do they escape walls? Never mind. Um... Alright, he says, better lighting... for the interior storage columns, redstone torches. So here... So he's changed it, and he's made it so that it's darker up there and, and lighter down here. I think this will be better. Obviously we haven't excavated all the way down. He's actually excavated another level, I think. Or two levels. So he's continued to excavate. I think that's better. I think that's better, because now you focus on on the bottom bits and not the top bits so much. I do think that's a bit better. Because now it's quite obvious that you know the stuff is down here and then up there is just nothing. Uh, go to one of the completed modules on the near left and go up the stairs if you want to see the changes I made on the upper level. I think he means on the left. I think he means here. If you want to go up, well, if you want to go up and see what happens. So yeah, that's interesting. Well, I mean. I mean, it's not interesting in the sense that it's just a flat stone wall. But he's changed it, so before it was like an empty space and you, you had the feeling that there's more room up there even though you couldn't go in. 
So now it's quite clear that there's no room here. I think you can put a little bit of detailing back in if you really want to. I mean, you don't have to be completely flat. If you want to use like a different material, like maybe stairs or stone slabs or whatever it is, put a little pattern in, you can do that if you really want to. But um, yeah, don't really have to, to be honest. It's just a, a possibility. You can decide whether it's a good idea or not. Is that right? Dirt. Let's just see what he has over here. Is it the same? Yeah, it's the same all the way around. Okay, I see. I think he means this. Alright, so that that's all he has for for the um storage area. You see, I think the clouds I think the cows <laughs> are glitching out. Although that one glitched back in. Like where did that cow come from? And if we sit here and wait, do they glitch out of this enclosure after a while? This is this is this is animal abuse. That's what it is. I'm gonna report you to Peter. Alright, so this is all he has asked for the uh Huh. Or he's asked for the storage, and he's gonna continue excavating. He hasn't built anything down here yet. How much time has he spent on this? This is amazing. Anyway, let's go back up. So he's got other things he wants me to look at as well, in other parts of his world. So let's go take a look around the place. He says, where the sandstone highway was, which is in that direction, there is a small sandstone building and some columns in the lake to the left of it. Regarding the columns, first of all, I decided to stick with the highway type road for crossing the lake. But imagine there is a bridge supported by the columns. Is the path too straight? Do you reckon I can get away with a zigzagging column for the sandstone structure? Well, there's a lot of things. For the sandstone structure, I have a rather large problem that I... Okay, let's start with the first part. Um, there's a small sandstone building and some columns in the lake to the left of it. A small sandstone structure. What was here before? What did he, how did he... I don't remember what this was like before. So he's managed to do that. There's a small sandstone structure. I guess he's missing... he means um... this. And... Some columns in the lake to the left of it. Some columns in the lake here. Yep, that's fine. Okay, cool. Uh, it's... Imagine there's a bridge supported by the columns. Cool. Is the path too straight? Well, bridges usually are straight, so I don't think that's a problem. I mean, the, the question I would ask is, would you actually put a bridge here rather than build a path along the edge of the lake? But, I mean, if you've decided to put the bridge in, then... Yeah, a straight bridge is fine. But... You know, I would have considered putting the path just along the edge there instead of putting a bridge across. But again, if you want the bridge, then fine. A straight bridge is good. Do you reckon I could get away with zigzagging the columns? What do you mean zigzagging the columns? And where do you where do you intend to zigzag this thing? Planning something to go here. Wait a minute. In front of the bridge? Where does the bridge... Zigzagging the columns is very, very unusual. Because, look, bridges are expensive, right? I mean, you, you have to build the whole structure and things. So usually bridges will take the shortest, most cost-effective path from point A to point B. Because, you know, bridges are actually quite expensive and, and difficult to build. So zigzagging is not the shortest, most cost-effective path. It's like turning 90 degrees and then going in the other way. It's, it's kind of making a complex thing even more complicated. So in the real world, you would not see zigzagging bridges. Although, you know, in America, you might see some pretty impressive highway projects with, you know, curved ramps and everything and all sorts of ramps and bridges everywhere. That's, it's, that's quite extravagant. It's, I don't know if that's really necessary but the Americans spent a lot of money on their highway systems. I think in Europe, 
I guess in 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 Germany, I guess in Japan, there's also a lot of money spent on that infrastructure. But zigzagging is uncommon. Let's just say that. But I don't know. It's Minecraft logic. It makes sense of Minecraft because Minecraft everything is square, and so you can't have circular ramps and 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 stuff like that. So maybe it's Minecraft logic. Maybe, maybe it makes sense that way. Uh, for the sensor structure, I have a rather large problem that I run into a lot. It turned out completely differently to how I imagined, and does no longer fit its original purpose. Uh, okay, it was going to be a villager village pavilion, as I prioritized aesthetics over practicality. Do you have any advice on how to avoid the scenario? I like the building, but since it doesn't have a purpose, is it better to think of a new purpose or to build a new building? I... I don't know. I don't know. Look, it's it's one of those things that you you just have to practice and get and get better at when you design, like your your purpose and the and how it looks. And it takes it takes practice, really. I mean, when you you just have to like I don't have any easy way to to address this. I mean, what what in a, in a proper design process, what you would do is you would have the brief, right? And the brief basically outlines what the building needs to be. In your case, a village slash pavilion, so a, a place to store a lot of villagers, I guess. So Minecraft logic, you need a lot of doors, right? So that's your brief, a, a villager pavilion. So then you would sketch design, which means you, you come up with some ideas of what it might look like. And then you would evaluate that design according to the criteria set on your brief. So you want it to look good, you say aesthetics is important, you need it to function as a villager thing, and then if it doesn't work, then you then you modify the sketch design. So you develop the design. And you, you change things if it doesn't work, you try different parts, you, you try out different layouts, and you try different things, and then you, until it works, and then you have uh, you have the design, and then you build it. But in, in that design process, you would notice that we're not building the thing right away. In Minecraft, it's different. In Minecraft, building and designing is is, is pretty much the same thing. In in actual, you know, in real world architecture, you don't just build it. You have to draw the thing first. You draw the building, and then you test it in drawing to make sure that everything works when you draw it, and then you get someone to build the thing from the drawings. So I guess, you know, if we consider that, then my answer would be change this. Now I know you you're playing in survival, and that kind of takes a lot of time, which is why I use dirt to build. I see you haven't used dirt prototypes, which means you have to kind of use the pickaxe. Um, yeah, yeah. I guess the, uh, the proper way to design would be to change it. I mean, maybe it's worthwhile finishing, mocking it up. So whatever you have in mind now try to finish it and then if it doesn't work then change it literally you know knock down knock it down and, and change it and that's kind of time consuming but that's how you design properly and um, okay so that, that that's basically the answer if you want to design properly I mean if you just change the purpose of the building that's that's kind of not you know, it's, it's not. It's it's kind of like cheating, right? Because you you wanted a building, you didn't get it, and then you you don't, and you just leave it. It's not really a, a, that's not really you know achieving your objective in the first place. So, I mean, you can do that. I don't think it's it's the best thing to do. But you know, up to you. I would yeah, finish mocking it up, and then look at the parts that don't work and try to make it work, like change it in a way that makes it work, basically. Um, yeah. Okay, good luck. <laughs> um, wheat farm, I don't know where you eat. Heading in the opposite direction of the columns. Uh, so this way? As in... As he says, heading in the, over the hill and behind the storage. Wow, over the hill and behind the storage. Okay. Um, I built. Oh, there's a wheat farm. I built the insides of the farm before the outside. 
I think this is an automated wheat farm that he was talking about. So he's he's built the function first, function before aesthetics for the wheat farm, because the wheat farm has the function as a wheat farm. And I'm struggling to make some sort of exterior wall, surrounding wall, without compromising on the view of the farm, which I like the look of from a distance. Um, right, if I can find it, is that it? If the chunks will load, that would be good. This is the storage, I think. Okay, there's the wheat farm there. That's not actually... oh, let's cheat a bit. War hacks. There's a ravine there. There's a lot of lava and caves down there. Okay, stop cheating. Wow, there's a lot of caves down there. Um, so he likes the look of it from a distance, but he wants some sort of war. I'm assuming this is the... Because you play survival, I'm, just, I'm assuming the war is to keep the monsters out. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the purpose of the war is. I'm assuming it's to keep monsters out. Alright, let's see what it looks like from up close. And he doesn't want to build a wall because he wants to keep it looking this way. I see... Wait a minute. How does this automate? Is this actually automated or not? I don't know. Okay, if you want to build a wall, there's not enough room here with the river. Which, I mean, I guess you can modify the river if you want to. Uh, oh, I see. We've got a path down here. Oh, I see. Wait, how much further does the farm go and how much wheat do you actually need? Okay, so a simple... well, not that simple, but a, a common trick that um, they use in landscape design. It's actually called... Let's see, uh... They actually call it the Haha, -ha, which is the most ridiculous name for anything. Right? It's actually literally called the Haha. -ha. I don't know if... Okay, let me just look this up on Wikipedia. Come on, Wikipedia. Load. Thank you. Please. So basically, you it's a ditch. Instead of building a wall to serve as a barrier, you have a ditch. That, that's basically it. Let me just look this up. Uh, a concealed trench used to create a barrier that, unlike a fence, does not block one's view of the landscape. That's, I think you can figure out how to make it work from there. So, Wikipedia, if you type in that, you should find it. And uh, you'll find that it talks a lot about what it, how, what it actually does. So, assuming that you want... Oh crap, did I change the resolution a little bit? I might have messed this up, hold on, let me stop. Alright, so, you know, if, if your issue is you don't want to build a wall, to keep zombies out, which would need to be like, I don't know, four blocks high with an overhang to stop the spiders. I mean, that would block the view of the farm, which you say you like the view of the farm, so you don't want to block it. So then what you would do instead is you dig down, and you kind of... how far the spiders jump? Quite a bit. So, you'd have to dig a trench. Oh, you have a shovel. Let's use that instead. So you dig a trench, right, and then you have to dig that as well, and then you put the the overhang there. I think even that is not enough. The spiders, I think, can jump across. So let's just make this one block further out. So this ends up being a really space-consuming barrier. So then, if you imagine this thing just t continues on that way, so that that's a kind of a wall now, but it's it doesn't block any views, but it should block zombies and skeletons and spiders. The spiders, I don't think they can jump that far. Might be wrong. Anyway, so that's a haha, -ha. 
and it's a stupid name, but you can find out why they call it that if you read the Wikipedia article. So that might be the solution to your problems. I don't know if you like that or not, but um, that works, I think. Okay, so that's... I think that that's all he's asking. He says if you want to see my old base, which might be fun to look around and compare to how I used to build, or compare how I build now, uh, can be accessed via the nether, or by killing yourself. Let's kill ourselves. I've turned sheets on, by the way. Uh, respawn. So this is his old base. I think this might be one of his first houses. <laughs> it's nice. I mean, it's, it's not as well designed, but it's got a certain charm to it. Don't you know? Don't you think so? Like the uh, the the amateur Minecraft style. It's got a certain charm to it. I think. So this is his old world. He's built a lot of stuff. Like quite a proficient. Builder. So yeah, and uh, look at you can see how big the you know his construction does. So he's he's built all this. I'm not gonna explore too much, but you can see how the use of materials is not that interesting, and the shapes are quite simple. But he's experimenting and learning, so we can compare this to his latest stuff, and we can see how it's progressed over time, which is quite good. It's good, man. You're learning. I like it. Anyway, I'm gonna stop here and. Yeah, I don't have so much else to say, so we've, we've covered a few things, I think. Hopefully it's been useful. Alright, I'll see you guys. This is SCK Chui's Minecraft Design School. You send me your questions and your save file or your server IP address, and I will give you architecture design advice and feedback. See the video description for more details. Seriously, you should read the description before you send me anything. Thank you.